Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are doing a spotlight on pansies and violas. And it is a rainy spring day, but this is really the perfect time to talk about them because they love water and they love cool temperatures. So another harbinger of spring plant for us. They're so cheerful and wonderful. Um, most of the pansies that you see are going to be this large flowering type. Some pansies have what they call the face or a blotch on them like this one. So you can see that big, beautiful blotch. Um, some of them are clear faced. So I'm just gonna show you, this is more of a viola type, a little bit smaller flower but you don't see that face on the flower. So you'll see um, them both ways, both types, if you will, out there, and so many colors. Tons of different colors of the rainbow, mixtures, blends. Um, the old fashioned, I should show you, the old fashioned viola is actually called viola tricolor, and it's actually a parent of the modern pansy, if you will. And if you see a tricolor viola that has three distinct colors to it, that's like an old variety, okay? Um, so needless to say, these plants are absolutely wonderful. We love them. And let's talk about how you can be successful growing them. So first of all, light. So they really do like full sun to part shade conditions. The caveat here is that if you're planting them in a full sun condition, six or more hours of direct sunlight, you better make sure that they stay moist and cool. So I really think the best place to plant them is either northern exposure or eastern exposure. The reason being is in northern exposure, you're getting very bright wraparound light and usually cooler areas, but you're not necessarily getting direct hot sunlight baking the plants. Or in eastern exposure, you're getting nice, um, if you will, early sunlight. It's not as intense if light and heat than like western exposure is in the afternoon. So north and east are great. Um, put them in containers, put them in borders, put them really anywhere where you can provide those light conditions. And then of course, moving into temperature, keeping them cool. So again, these are cold crops. They love to be on the cooler side. They are very, very frost tolerant. Here in Northeast Ohio, we of course see them in spring and we're super excited to see them because they're such beautiful, bright and colorful plants. But really a good time to plant them is also in fall when the temperatures cool down. And in fall, you can actually enjoy them through fall into winter. When they get covered by the snow, it's fine. And typically they'll pop up again in spring. So just depending on when you want color for pansies or violas, you can plant them springtime or fall and they'll do very, very well for you, okay? Now, is this plant an annual, perennial, or biennial? It's actually all three, believe it or not. If you're planting pansies and violas in the spring, guess what? It's really more of an annual plant. They have a very hard time making it through our hot, humid summers. So when the heat and the temperatures really raise up, you'll see them die back and they'll just kind of melt into the soil. If you plant them in the fall, you typically will be able to enjoy them a little bit longer through that fall, winter and spring season. Okay, now soil. We're always gonna say, and it kind of sounds sort of, um, I don't know, like an oxymoron, but they love moist, but well-drained soil, rich, humusy soil, so well amended, so whenever you're planting these in the ground, make sure you're not planting them straight into clay soil. It has to be amended. It would be better if it was in a raised bed, if you will, so it can still drain, the water can still drain away from them because they'll rot if they stay too moist, okay? We love planting them in containers, of course, because you get better drainage, usually in your potting mixtures, and of course, with containers with drainage holes, so they'll drain out, so keep that in mind fertilizer with these guys. So fertilizer, you can really use any type of fertilizer, multi-purpose, just follow the package directions. So whatever you prefer. We usually will use Osmocote 
or we can use the organic plant tone and that works great as a multi-purpose fertilizer for these guys. Now, maintenance. You're gonna say, Noelle, okay, I need to water them, I need to feed them, absolutely, keep them cool, but think about deadheading because the more often you go through and deadhead pansies and violas, the better they are going to produce and bloom for you, but it also helps keep them compact. So violas will start to get leggy as it gets a little bit hotter out, the temperatures increase. So keeping them deadheaded keeps that growth nice and tight, but also keeps the flowers coming. Now, when you deadhead them, you are actually taking the flower and the stem underneath the flower, which is called the pedestal, and you are going all the way down into the foliage. So we'll show you a close up but I just deadheaded that flower and that stem is probably three inches long, okay? So do that as often as you can. If you can do it every day, that's great. If you can only do it once a week or once every other week, great. Just make sure that you are deadheading as you go through. They'll perform so much better for you, okay? As far as division is concerned, you can divide them up. If you're purchasing you know, pansies in a market basket, believe me, you can go through and divide all those individual plants, plant them however you want to. If they're continuing to produce for you, so they're kind of performing like a biennial, which means it goes through two years to complete a life cycle, then that's okay. You can actually divide in the fall. So spring bloomers, we tend to divide in the fall okay so just keep that in mind opposite season that it blooms so if it's performing a little bit better for you in whatever environment you have and it is turning into a perennial where it blooms three years or more then yeah go ahead and divide it in the fall and, and spread it out wherever you need to go okay um what else i think i'm going to talk about varieties here so again we talked about the pansies this is viola wetrachiana and um, that is basically, it's a hybrid pansy. It does have a little bit of the old fashioned viola tricolor as a parent, okay? And it has a couple of different varieties. So it's definitely a hybrid plant. Violas, or excuse me, pansies, the large flowering pansy, and I know I've mentioned this before, but large flowering pansies do not produce as many seeds as the smaller flowering viola. So you see these reseed every once in a while, but it's not very common for them to have them come back in the garden, okay? Now, the small flowering viola, and you can tell there's lots of different varieties and colors and so forth. Um, these guys, again, are also viola wetrachiana, but you can tell that there's some, definitely some parentage with viola tricolor. So sometimes you hear them called viola tricolor, and that's fine. The viola, again, smaller flower, and therefore has a little bit more energy to produce a lot more seeds. So they get their common name, Johnny Jump Up, because those seeds tend to spread and of course germinate and grow and you get violas in different areas. I'm gonna tell you, when a seed head produces off on one of these stems, it <laughs> breaks into three capsules. The three capsules have 50 seeds in them. So there's 150 seeds that can spread from one viola stem. So that, that's, a lot, that's a lot of seeds, especially when you have a lot of flowers. As we move into other varieties of violas, you will see that there are some varieties that are meant to be a little bit better or longer lived like perennial type. So again, your perennial viola is, is supposed to grow in the garden three years or more, okay? So one of those is columbine. And columbine is a, a beautiful, lovely viola. It is um, in the cornuda family, so viola cornuda, which is also known as tufted violet or um, horned viola. And what's really interesting about this plant is it stays very nice, low growing foliage, kind of like a ground cover. You do get this beautiful, I kind of call it like a tie dye bloom, that white and violet. And this plant will, it has a slight fragrance, very, very pretty again, will pop up in the spring for you and kind of sporadically blooms throughout, okay? 
Through the summer, you won't see it perform very much, so you just wanna cut it back down to the foliage. Again, keep it cooler. So I think part shade growing conditions are really, really good uh, for the perennial violas especially. And um, it should re-bloom for you in the fall. So again, this is a nice one, that beautiful uh, kind of tie-dyed flower, I love it. Okay, now there are hybrids to these perennials again. So there's more crossbreeding happening. And what happens is they're trying to develop a better, more heat tolerant variety, longer blooming variety. And so we come into the Starry Night series, or I shouldn't say Starry Night, it's Celestial series, that's what it is, okay? So there's three different colors and we'll show you all of these. This one's Blue Moon, larger flowers, obviously, more pansy-like than viola-like. And they do have some whiskers and some nice coloration. So blue moon, and they're a little bit taller too. So I should say most pansies and violas, they'll grow like four to eight inches tall, and they can get about six to 12 inches wide, just depending on how well you're grooming them, how well you're fertilizing them. So that's one individual plant. With these guys, you get similar growth these are gonna be a little bit taller, probably around the 10 inch mark, eight to 10 inches, and you can get a little bit wider than a foot. So just depending on what uh, plant you wanna grow. Whoops. So Blue Moon, this is Northern Lights. So it's a little bit darker, beautiful dark purple and lavender and yellow. And this one is Starry Nights. And this one reminds me of one of my favorites, it was called Etain, and it was really, really perfumey. And these do have a really nice sweet fragrance to them and that kind of leads me to my next point is that all your violas and pansies are really good pollinator attractants especially your butterflies early season and also your bumblebees and your honeybees early season so they're great plants to have very very good for your pollinators and again we always talk about pollinators trying to attract them all the way through the season with a lot of diversity and color and different types of flowers. Here you go, you've got a lot of color diversity and spring blooms ready to go for you. Um, a couple other things about pansies and violas. They are edible flowers, okay? So you can enjoy them in salads or you can sugar them if you'd like to. They also, again, I might've mentioned this before, are frost tolerant. So really the fluctuating temperatures in spring they really don't have a problem with them. And if you're going to propagate seeds or grow seeds, they actually like to be cold stratified. So that means you wanna keep them in the dark, believe it or not, keep them about a week in 40 to 45 degree temperatures to keep them cool. And then you go ahead and you still germinate them in the dark, okay, in a dark setting, and you kind of germinate them at 65 degrees. Once they germinate or pop, you're literally growing them at about 45 to 50 degrees. So again, it's a cool crop. They really, really prefer those types of temperatures. I think other than that, they're, they're a great plant to have. They definitely get your spring container gardens going and, and looking gorgeous. You can plant them with other edibles, herbs, lettuces, whatever, whatever you're starting here for your cold crops. And they really just make me happy. I hope they make you happy too. Enjoy.